Hello everybody. So this is Atul Lahiri, International Master from Kolkata in India. Uh, once again, we start another session of chess lessons, and I would like to resume the game which I uh, sh which I was showing you yesterday. Unfortunately, the live telecast got uh, interrupted because of poor connectivity. Uh, the game which I was showing you, as you would recall, was a masterpiece played by the the magician from Riga or one of the greatest attacking players of all time ex world champion Mikhail Tal from Riga in Latvia of course uh, at that time Latvia was a part of Soviet Union so he was one of the uh, one of the so many great chess players which Soviet Union had produced uh, we shall go through this game once again and uh, uh, as we go through the game we will have lots of instructive moments and I hope you will enjoy the game as much as you will learn from the game. So let's start the game right away. White Mikhail Tal was playing against Tringov, the Bulgarian master and this game was played in Interzonal Championship in Amsterdam, Amsterdam which is the capital of the Netherlands. तो स्वागत है दोस्तों आज हम एक बार फिर से ताल और ट्रिंगोव के बीच में 1964 में खेला गया एक मैच देखने जा रहे हैं और इस गेम के माध्यम से हम कुछ फिर से ओपनिंग या मिडिल गेम थीम्स के बारे में कुछ जानेंगे सीखेंगे और ऑफ कोर्स ये गेम से कुछ बहुत अच्छे टैक्टिक्स देखेंगे और मजा लेंगे तो लेट स्टार्ट द गेम राइट वे वाइट प्लेट e4 black played g6 well the move g6 it looks very odd at first sight for someone who is not initiated into the intricacies of the game the method of development of the bishop uh, through g7 or g2 through the long diagonal is called fianchetto in chess. So whenever white plays g6 or even b6 for instance, white or black, uh, the bishop, the idea is of course development of bishop through this square, which is a very good square because it controls a very long diagonal. And this method of development is called fianchetto. So it can be on the king side, on the queen side, by white, by black, whatever. Of course, the bishop gets deployed to a very good diagonal, which is according to our principle. Uh, but at the same time, this type of move basically surrenders control of the center. So as I said previously, uh, in the opening phases, our objective should be speedy deployment of the pieces. We have to bring out the pieces very fast and preferably to the most active squares to the center of the boards. Now, uh, the previous game which I showed you uh, showed the importance of classical center. That means with a pawn on e4, d4 for white or e5, d5 for black. For instance, these four squares are considered to be the central most squares. They not only make the pieces more active, but if we control them with the pawns, uh, these Pawns do not allow the opponent pieces to occupy the central squares. So, uh, whenever we play moves like g6, it simply allows white to occupy the central squares uncontested. But of course, this was the wisdom, the traditional wisdom in chess or the classical chess wisdom, you can say. And it was prevalent more than 100 years ago. But then suddenly a group of leading chess players or chess theorists or theoreticians, if you may call them, uh, led by people like Aaron Nimzovich, who was a very famous chess theoretician and a very strong chess master, Richard Reti and some other players, they started challenging the very concept of occupying chess center with pawns. So according to them, it is equally good 
to deploy pieces from far away and contest the opponent's center by attacking with the pieces. For example, this is a typical example. Black leaves behind the pawns and he intends to basically attack the center with pieces from far away. And this has been done, uh, I mean, the main concept is black wants to keep the pawns as flexible as possible. So in, if necessity be, he can rearrange his pawn formations according to the situation. So this was an idea which was floated by some of the uh, players, chess players who were called hyper-modern uh, style of players. So, of course, both the styles are valid, classical as well as hypermodern. The main idea, of course, is not to ignore the center. Either you control with the pieces or pawns, it's the center. I mean, the pieces have to be active. So, well, in this game, Tringo, the Bulgarian master who was playing against Mikhail Tal, he was not as famous as Mikhail Tal, but we have to... Uh, understand that this game was playing in an interzonal championship. That means previously, about 50 years ago, uh, for the World Chess Championship, there used to be various stages of selection, of qualification. The first stage used to be, of course, the national championship. And after the national championship, the selected players would participate in zonal championship. The whole world was divided into many zones and there was a set a criteria of the qualifiers from each zone and after qualifying from the zones they would play interzonal and from interzonal some players would be selected for the candidates and the winner of the candidates would challenge the reigning world champion so it was a very long process and invariably the players who participated in interzonal were quite strong players. Of course, not like Mikhail Tal, but quite strong. So although Tal was a stronger player, Tringo was not a pushover either. But the ease at which Mikhail Tal defeats Tringo speaks of his strength. And as we shall see, it is the position the, the real reason why Tal won is not only because Tal was a genius, but because he was following the laws of chess much better than his opponent. So after d4, black played bishop g7. So, well, it's simple development. As I said, black wants to uh, pressurize the center and develop his pieces before deciding on the pawn set up in the center. White played knight c3. He brought he developed his knight. Black played d6. Of course, the objective of d6 is not only it uh, plans to bring out his piece in future, the bishop on c8, but also restrict the pawn's movement, discourages e5. Friends, if you remember, uh, I showed you one example from the game of Steinitz, where I showed you a hypothetical variation where white, if allowed uncontested, the central pawns, the classical center, would keep on moving forward and pushing the opponent's pieces away. So this move, d6, it basically restricts the free movement of the pawns, of white classical pawns. Well, white played knight f3, bringing out his pieces. And notice, Mikhail Tal takes center, brings out his pieces, without wasting time. Uh, black here, most, mostly most players would rather prefer knight f6 here. This is the most normal move. And the name of this defense, the name of this defensive pattern or defensive system is called the Pirth defense. Well, it's not name of a region or a country, but the defense is named after a chess player whose name was Visya Pirth. And he had analyzed this variation along with another Russian master. His name was Ufimitsev. So Pirz and Ufimitsev had independently analyzed uh, how black could play from this position. 
So knight f6 is considered to be the pits. But here black played a strange move. He played c6. Well, before telling you the exact ideas of c6, uh, I would like to well emphasize that for an uh, an amateur or for someone who wants to learn chess lessons, it's always better to follow the basic principles of bringing out pieces as quickly as possible. But here, uh, black delays the development of knight. The reason is he wants to pressurize the d4 pawn. As I said, uh, one of the aims of fianchetto or flank openings or rather hypermodern school of chess is to pressurize the opponent center, to let opponent occupy the center and then pressurize it by developing the pieces from far away. But of course the pieces have to aim at the center and then at an opportune moment decide on what kind of pawns you want to place in the center. So here we are seeing a very good hypermodern school. Ka. और ये पर्टिकुलर डिफेंस में ब्लैक कोशिश कर रहा है कि नाइट को जितना देर बाद निकले नाइट अगर तुरंत निकलता इसे हम पीट्स डिफेंस कहते लेकिन नाइट एक मूव बाद या कुछ मूव बाद निकल निकलेगा तब तक ब्लैक पहले इस पॉन के ऊपर प्रेशर देना चाहता है और एक बार वाइट को थोड़ा सा डिफेंसिव करके उसके बाद नाइट बेस्ट स्क्वायर से निकलेगा ये ब्लैक का प्लान है इस गेम में और ये पद्धति को मॉडर्न डिफेंस कहते हैं जहां पे ब्लैक फियंकेटो करके नाइट को थोड़ी देर बाद डेवलप करे सो फ्रेंड्स लेट्स गो बैक टू द गेम नाउ व्हाइट प्लेड एन इंटरेस्टिंग मूव ऑफ कोर्स व्हाइट हैज मेनी ऑप्शंस हियर ही कैन सिंपली द मेन ऑप्शन वुड बी ऑफ कोर्स टू ब्रिंग आउट द बिशप आइदर टू हियर और टू हियर और मे बी टू हियर the main idea, of course, is uh, bringing out the pieces, uh, then castles, bring out the rook, and after bringing out all pieces, then look for a way to attack. But uh, white played, white also brought out the piece, of course, but he played a move bishop g5. So this is a move which we have been seeing quite often. I mean, we have seen Steinitz play this move, bishop g5. Uh, bring out a bishop to a very active square. White's main idea here is, as I said, black was aiming to bring his queen here and the bishop on g4 attacking the d4 pawn. So he would basically force white to be on the defensive before striking in the center. So that was black spam. White by playing bishop g5, he pins this pawn and also aims queen to develop, uh, queen to be developed on d2 and long castle so that he can overprotect, sorry, sorry, he can overprotect the d4 pawn. So that was White's idea uh, so that he can very quickly castle on the queen side, bring the rook in the center, protect the d pawn, but also. Uh, you know, plays his rooks very actively. Subsequently, he'd of course develop the bishop and place the rook on e1, and so on. Black, before white got queen d2 and long castle, he played queen b6. Yeah. So, black played queen to b6. Well, the main aim of this move is, of course, as per the plan, he is attacking, not attacking really, because the pawn is defended currently, defended by the knight and queen, but pressurizing this pawn as well as attacking this pawn. Notice, the movement of bishop to g5 has basically left this pawn unguarded. So this is the move which... Uh, black aimed, development plus attack. As I said, not to bring out the queen 
too early in the game because it loses time. But here, the queen in p6 is not likely to lose time because uh, white cannot develop his piece and attack the queen at this moment. So it is perfectly safe. So it is white to play here. And as usual, I would like to give you some time, maybe half a minute before we move on. So please think and try to think like Mikhail Tal. Well, Mikhail Tal decided to simply ignore the pawn threat. The reason for playing this is, of course, Mikhail Tal, through his intuition, that means uh, through his feel, the gut feeling, he knows that he has to keep on developing pieces fast. And by sacrificing this pawn, which black took, if black doesn't capture the pawn, white would castle in the next move and this castling would allow not only to to defend the pawn but also to bring the rook, rook to d1 to an active square so here white sacrifices the pawn black black captures the pawn and after capturing the pawn black attacks the rook to a1 so white is compelled to play move like rook b1 he has to defend it uh, with a tempo because he's also attacking the queen and the only square for the queen is queen a3 and this is how the game went so let's look at this position and then we go back to, to two moves back how Mikhail Tal came to this conclusion so if you look at this position white has one two three four five pieces already developed and where the rook on the open file the knight towards the center this knight towards the center and this bishop of course aiming at something and on a good diagonal so all the pieces very active black has only two pieces the bishop on g7 and the queen here and most of the pieces are still at home and it will, they will need time to develop so any player of Tal's caliber can guess that sacrificing or giving away one pawn for so much time or so much development advantage would be definitely good for him. So as I said previously, if you could recall that do not throw away material or do not sacrifice or give away your material without sufficient ground. तो अगर आप श्योर नहीं हैं कि कुछ सैक्रिफाइस या कुछ मटेरियल कटा देना आ, आपको श्योर कुछ फायदा देगा तो आप वैसा मत कीजिए आप श्योर होके कैलकुलेट करके उसके बाद ही खेलिए लेकिन यहाँ पर मिखाइल ताल उन्होंने क्वीन डी टू खेला और क्वीन डी टू खेलते समय उनका एक अंदाज है कि मेरा पीसेस इतना डेवलप्ड है कि श्योरली मुझे कुछ ना कुछ बाद में मिल जाएगा इट इज नॉट प्रैक्टिकली पॉसिबल टू फोर्स द एंड ऑफ द गेम फ्रॉम हियर बिकॉज देर आर मेनी पॉसिबिलिटीज फॉर ब्लैक एंड इट इज नॉट डिजायरेबल टू कैलकुलेट टू मेनी वेरिएशन विच मे नॉट एक्चुअली टेक प्लेस सो मिखाइल टल सिंपली गेम अवे हिज पॉन एंड केप्ट ऑन डेवलपिंग हिज पीसेस ही प्लेड बिशअप सी फोर so six pieces already developed and in the next move he is going to bring his rook by castling now it is black to play so this is where well we will go through the game once again after i finish this game and then we can analyze the game and we can try to find out where black missed moves so basically black was afraid of castling and white pushing the pawns the classical pawns, uh, he refrained from moves like knight f6 because he was afraid of e5. 
White will play e5, attacking the knight, and gain time. So he played a move queen a5. And the aim of this move, of course, was to get back to defense. So he knew attack will be coming after a few moves, after white develops his pieces. So black wants to somehow get back to his defensive position. But as we shall see after the game, when we revise or go through the game once again, black could have improved at this point. White castled. It is black to play. Uh, well, the most natural move once again is development of knight followed by castling to bring this rook into play. But black played a funny move that is e6. So why did he play this move? Uh, we shall go through that shortly. But before going through why he played e6, we have to find out why the move knight f6 is not such a good move here. So uh, had black played knight f6, what should Tal have played? This is my question. I will pause the video. I would like you to pause uh, for about one minute or I would like to wait for one minute before you guess your move. So let's take a break for one minute. Guess Tal's move. Well, congratulations if you have found out the solution. Uh, knight f6 would have been a mistake. And how do you actually spot why, how you can exploit this position? Is first of all you have to spot that the queen over here is unguarded, unsupported, and uh, could have been attacked by the queen had there been no knight. So this knight is basically blocking the diagonal so you cannot capture the queen so if you could favorably get the knight to jump with the time with the tempo then this queen would be in danger so keeping this in mind the move e5 is a move which you can uh, find out e5 not only drives this knight away from play but also opens the diagonal of the bishop to capture this. Uh, if black recaptures, white can play this move, check and removing this knight from, from the diagonal and of course this queen is now lost. So how do you exactly find such move? Uh, before proceeding, I would like to remind all of you that this kind of tactics or this kind of move where a diagonal or a file is covered by some piece and by favorably removing the cover, you can get something more, is called discovered attack. So for instance, this diagonal, this favorable diagonal is covered by the knight, so you have to Remove the knight favorably so that you can get over to the queen. So once you spot this weakness, you can spot these moves as well. Of course, after bishop e7, black is not bound to capture this. So he can capture this pawn as well. But you can see the rook, the, the e file is opened. And the king will be in big danger if white simply continues with moves like rook e1. The king will be in big danger. So, Tringo, being a strong player himself, did not play knight f6. He played e6. 
And what is the idea of E6? Well, this is the most important instruction of, for this game. And I would like all of you to pay special attention to what I'm going to say now. We have seen previously, whether in the game of Mikhail Tal or Steinitz or, or anybody, that when you have big advantage in development time, in case of Steinitz, it was just one move. Uh, had Black played one move, he would have escaped. But Steinitz did not allow that one move. In the same way, whenever you have a big or small lead in development and you are attacking, you need a line, a file or a diagonal to enter into opponent's camp. So even if you are ahead in development, suppose all the pieces are developed and your opponents, none of the pieces are developed. But you cannot get inside the opponent's camp. It's of no use. So it's very important to not only develop your pieces fast, but also keep in mind the roads, the avenues, the files and the diagonals for you to enter into opponent's position. So here, Black is hoping that although he is behind in development, he is one pawn up. And if he can maintain the close position, if he doesn't allow the open lines, so you might, be, might have observed that B file is one of the open lines, but there's nothing much happening right now here. So if Black manages to somehow close the position or keep the position closed, then the development advantage will not be felt and black can slowly develop and catch up with development. So it's up to white not only to develop fast, but in order to punish the opponent, he needs to open up the position at all cost. So a Mahathapun instruction कि जब भी आप डेवलपमेंट में आपकी बढ़त हो और आप आगे हो तो आप अवश्य देखें कि किसी भी प्रकार से पोजीशन को खोलना है और ओपोनेंट का पोजीशन पे एंटर करना है तो आपको न केवल डेवलपमेंट में आगे बढ़ना है जैसे यहां हम देखते हैं मिखाइल ताल ऑलमोस्ट सभी पीसेस को डेवलप कर चुका है सभी पीसेस और ब्लैक का अभी भी रुक नाइट बिशप नाइट रुक तो करीब सभी पीसेस अंदर है सिर्फ दो के सिवाय डेवलप्ड है ही नहीं अब व्हाइट का अगला मूव होगा ये अगला चाल होगा कैसे करके लाइन को खोले और कैसे करके घुस जाए ऑपोनेंट के पोजीशन पे सो हियर इफ व्हाइट प्लेस ई5 ब्लैक कैन क्लोज इट विद जी5 देयर इज नो वे हाउ यू कैन ओपन और इफ यू प्ले जी5 ब्लैक कैन प्ले ई5 बट ऑफ कोर्स ब्लैक कैन बिफोर दैट play this moves and play e5. So the position is relatively closed. There's no way how you can penetrate. So this is the idea behind e6. It not only shuts this bishop on c4, but also, well, the bishop on c4 doesn't have a strong diagonal because the pawn on e6 is basically closing the diagonal. And also it prepares for blocking the the center if white tries to break somehow uh, well white played rookie one look at white's play every move fresh pieces every move fresh pieces he mobilizes very fast like tennis black another small question can he play knight to e7 can black play knight to e7 it's very normal. No, a big no, because uh, as we see, have seen uh, in the previous move, that this queen on a5 is insecure. And all white needs to do is somehow get this knight, remove the knight with the tempo. And here we can do very easily. I can take and play knight check, winning the queen. So once again, 97 is not possible. And in absence of any good move, Tringov, the Bulgarian master, he played a6. 
Well, why A6? It's difficult to say what actually went through the mind of uh, the master about 50 years back. But how I can interpret this move is he takes away the B5 square from the pieces, especially after this pawn uh, moves. So how this pawn is likely to move? If white plays, if white ever plays D5. Of course, such move is not possible because C3 is hanging right now. But in future, if he plays d5 and black captures, the d5 square would be uh, a square through which white can enter. So he, you know, safeguards this square. But I think it would have been better to develop some pieces instead of, you know, making too many pawn moves in the opening. It's white to play and once again a very important position. So the reason why I ask you to think is there are some positions which are more important or more critical than the others. So I, I would like you to pay more attention to those positions. So if you go through uh, the video later, you can always pause the video and take some time and uh, well, in these critical moments, you can think yourself what Tal would have played. But if you're on a live show, I have to pause the video for some time. And of course, you can go through the video later after the live show is over. So why to play? Find out the best move. White has to attack because white is ahead in development. As I said, where do you attack? Of course, if you have an open line, you can enter the position. But normally, the attack is always on the weakest point. And the greatness of good players is they spot the weakest point very fast. So here the weak spot is, if you have spotted, good, it is the d6 square. Because the d6 square does not have a pawn cover. For instance, the pawn is not on uh, e7 or on, say, sorry, or c7. So the d6 square or the pawn is left without a pawn backing. So Mikhail Tal visualized it and he played the move bishop f4. It is, it seems, White is wasting time, but no, White is already developed. All the pieces are very active. He simply needs to enter the opponent's position. Bishop f4 attacks d6. White played, black played e5. So we shall analyze it later. That which was the best move, how could black have played. But e5 moves looks good black is attacking the bishop and of course defending the pawn but as I said white somehow needed to open a line to enter into enemy's camp and this move is what white was looking for after exchange of the pawns he gets the d5 so this is what was not available two moves back by provoking black to play the move e5 white manages to open a line for him to enter into black's camp. Now this is once again a very very crucial moment of the game perhaps the most crucial moment and Mikhail Tal played very very well from here and he won the game in a few moves. Can you guess the move the legend played from here? Good. Congratulations if you have guessed the moves, but this is a really very, very strong move. And if you have not seen this game, earlier and if you could guess this move I would suggest 
or I advise you to take chess very seriously because only a really strong player or player with a very strong, you know, a talent, a very good talent can find such move. Queen to d6. Well, you have seen this move in the previous game of Mikhail Tal against Ulma. But that was French defense and this is modern defense. So why different openings have similar theme or same theme? So this is the reason why I say the best way to study openings is to master the chess themes. If you could master the chess themes, there may be 15, 20, 30 or every openings may be having 10 or 15 themes. Then even without learning the moves or memorizing the moves by heart, you can play openings very good. So you see, from modern defense, we have seen the first day we saw Spanish, then we saw Italian, then we saw French, we also saw Scandinavian, and today we are seeing modern defense. Openings are different, but the main ideas are similar. So, well, queen to d6, it's very similar, it's a brilliant move, the queen comes near the king, and if you notice carefully, black had attacked the bishop. White, sorry, white simply ignores the attack and finds something even better. And while finding something better or calculating this move, he is actually sacrificing even this knight. So right now there are two pieces which are hanging. Black has a choice which piece to capture. But interestingly, uh, you can capture either piece, but you can't save the game. The position is so good for white. Because, as you can see, all the pieces are active and ready to pounce upon black. Now, if black plays ef4, if he takes this, white will play knight to d5. Another very brilliant move. The knight sits in front of a pawn. He's ready to sacrifice himself and he's threatening to checkmate black. Black king doesn't have any squares to go. If black captures cd, white opens the e-file against the king. And it simply means the king doesn't have any square to go. Of course, the only moves are knight e7 where there will be checkmate in one move or bishop to e6. You might have noticed already uh, white is two pieces behind. But if you look at the position, there are at least four pieces which are sitting at home for black. So as I said even yesterday, it's the effective pieces. Uh, white has in this position five pieces in attack compared to only one or two pieces in defense. These defensive pieces are also not actually defending. So white can simply capture this bishop. He gets back one piece and threatens checkmate in the next move. So this can be a way of playing. Of course, these moves are also uh, in the air. So white can also play such moves. So it will be fantastic position, almost mating position for white. So the next move, next piece which can be captured is queen c3. And this was played by Tringov. Uh, please uh, look at the position carefully and observe that queen d8 is not possible. Although this is a move which black would love to play, <laughs> it looks very funny that the only piece, I mean one of the two pieces which was developed, is also undeveloped because now along with the rook all these pieces are on original squares. Only the bishop is not there. But for white all the pieces are developed. But unfortunately this move looks okay because at least it challenges the queen. But unfortunately this move is not possible because notice the Queen is defended by the king. And if you can make the king, if you can divert the king, 
we can manage to win the queen. So the diversionary tactics is bishop f7. This move somehow takes the king away from defense of the queen and now the queen is captured. So the queen d8 move although looks good at first sight doesn't work because of bishop f7. So black took the challenge and he took the knight. So currently white like yesterday is one pawn and one piece behind. But he had calculated how to finish the game. He played rook, this rook to d1. The reason why he doesn't play this rook to d1 will be known shortly. So he played this rook to d1 with the idea that he will checkmate his opponent on d8. Queen will move to d8, supported by the rook, and the king will not have any square to move. Now it's black to play. Black defended his position by playing this move. So after all, black thought, finally I will develop my piece and also close the file. And once again, it's white to play. Uh, as you can see, white is already one knight behind, one knight down, and two pieces are attacked, both the bishops. But it's white to play, and it's town to play. Guess the move for white. Well, once again, this position, uh, Tal found another way to sacrifice his bishop anyway. Two pieces were attacked, one had to be sacrificed, but he sacrifices in style and manages to checkmate Black's king very quickly. So the move he played was bishop f7 check. Now this move is practically, yeah, it finishes the game. If black plays king to d8, black captured the bishop. If he does not capture, then once again this knight is pinned. So white may play if he wishes. Moves like, like yesterday we saw. He can change the diagonal. And he can play something like bishop d2 and bishop a5 checkmating the king. Bishop d2 attacking the queen and bishop a5 if the queen moves somewhere. Bishop a5 the queen king doesn't have any move. So see we got some lessons from yesterday's game. Although the position was totally different, the opening was totally different. But still the ideas are similar. So that is why we should go through the games of old masters. We should pick up the ideas and apply them to, to the current position. There are other ways to checkmate as well. The move bishop g5 is also winning because if black defends, white can simply capture and capture this. So it may, the, notice the knight is pinned. The knight cannot move. Black has to play here. White can capture the rook and white will be winning. He will be ahead on material. So after king d8, white, white has multiple ways of finishing the game. In the main game, black was very sporting. Black accepted the challenge fully knowing that he is losing and losing very fast. So he played king f7. White played knight to g5. Check. The king has only one move to go back to e8. All the other squares are covered. White plays queen to e6. Check. Now there are two ways to defend the check. The first way is knight e7. White will play queen f7 check, king d8, knight e6 checkmate. Notice the c7 square is controlled by the knight. And he doesn't have any square to move. The only other move remaining is king to d8. After which white plays knight f7 check. The king moves to c7. 
of course here in this position black new is going to be checkmated and you don't need Mikhail Tal to find checkmate in one well the king doesn't so black resigned in this position and in the final position just notice the king cannot escape to b6 because the rook is here so now you can find out why Mikhail Tal played this rook to e1, d1 and not this rook. So he visualized this position from here that this rook would be useful on b line. Of course there might have been other reasons as well but one of the reasons is the king could not escape to b5 in the final position. So another brilliant game by Mikhail Tal. In this game we learned a lot of new things but uh, uh, almost a repetition of some of the old themes in new position. So we'll go through the game once again and we'll try to find out what we have learned from this game. We'll just repeat the game very fast. So this is a new opening or new defensive system which we have found out, which we have seen today. And while revising the game now, I will try to show you the possible improvements which black could have played in this game and we should always recall that without making a mistake we cannot lose in chess so after playing a game whether you win or lose try to go through the games and try to find out where you or your opponent has missed or could have improved so by finding out the mistakes we should and by not repeating them we can surely and definitely improve our chess skills well let's let's proceed white played d4 taking classical center black played bishop g7 developing and attacking uh, uh, the d4 square black played c6 which is little unconventional move knight f6 is more common it's called the pitts defense but black played modern defense, delaying the knight. And white played bishop g5, speedy development. Black played, sorry, black played queen b6. Uh, bringing out the queen as well as attacking these two pawns. Well, the d4 pawn is not attacked, but pressurizing d4 and attacking b2. White played queen d2. Notice how white is developing his pieces fast. Black played queen b2, rook b1, queen a3. So white sacrifices his pawn for development, for speedy development, and white continues his development, bishop c4. This is the first point where I think black could have improved. Black played queen a5, and we saw because of queen a5, white was having the chance of 95 discovered attack, many, in many variations. So queen a5 neither develops a piece, and also uh, keeps the queen to a very vulnerable square, a square from where it could have been attacked. So I think the right move over here was knight to f6 with the idea of castles. Black would have been a pawn down, white little ahead in development and it would have been a very interesting you know, a contest between development or material. Black is ahead in material, white is ahead in development and the game would have been very interesting. Notice if white plays e5 immediately, black can simply capture and after recapture he can move happily over here. The queen from a3 defends this pawn and also this square is a nice square for the queen to fall back if he is ever attacked. So this would have been a better defense and I would mm, prefer to play with white side here but I don't think it's difficult to give a definite ass assessment who is better. Black also has his trumps in this position but black played queen a5 which uh, I don't like. After castling he could play knight f6 no more. So not only queen a5 was simply a move which was not developing it didn't allow black to develop knight f6 even one move later. He played e6 and now black played rook e1. 
white plate rookie one sorry so white develops all his pieces in one move and everything is activated we saw black cannot play 97 he played the move a6 this is another point i think black could have improved maybe well black could have played something like knight d7 or even knight f6 because right now unlike the previous variation or in the move which i showed bishop was capturing on e7 after e5 and knight was moving to d5 but here there is no pawn on e7 so maybe this move or this move or any developing move might have been better but he played a6 which is another pawn move so too many pawn moves uh, are not so good in openings especially if you don't develop your pieces so this is another point where black could have improved and the final point after bishop f4 he attacked the pawn and black allowed the d file to be opened by playing e5 so definitely e5 is not such a good move his position collapsed immediately after the brilliant move queen d6 which i think tringov or black did not foresee but here my question is and i would like to give you this position as a homework can black play queen c7 so please try to work out uh, some moves from here how would black i mean queen c7 defends the d6 pawn and it is up to white now to prove that his development uh, can be made use of so how can white open up the position and penetrate into black's position from here can he or can he not notice if white plays e5 trying to somehow open the file black can always play d5 closing or if he plays d5 black can capture this and this bishop is left vulnerable because of this so keeping this in mind try to find out how should white proceed from here suppose you are white and you have all the de development advantage your opponent is one pawn up but the position is closed how do you open it so this will be an exercise for you and this will be a homework for for especially the aspiring students and upcoming chess players so next day when i meet i shall uh, try to help you with the solution but i would like to once again remind you that my lessons will not cover too many variations too many moves that will mainly confuse your mind and make this lessons less entertaining so i would like to concentrate or focus only on ideas so this has been a beautiful game which we saw now and your homework from now onwards i'll try to ask you some questions even for homework because i hope most of you must be having some time at home now because of lockdown so sathiyo main aapko ek chhota sa griha karya ye homework de raha hu ki is position mein agar black queen c7 khelta to white kis dhang se black ka territory ke andar ya black ke camp ke andar pravesh karta to ye ek chhota sa homework hai aap is video ko dekhne ke baad घर में कुछ समय निकाल के व्हाइट की तरफ से कोशिश कीजिए और अगला दिन मैं ये पोजीशन देख के आपको सोल्यूशन बताऊंगा अगर संभव हो तो आप मेरे को मैसेंजर में सोल्यूशंस भेज सकते हैं धन्यवाद एक बार फिर से कल मिलेंगे आप बने रहिए मेरे साथ यू फेसबुक पे और फ्यूचर में हम ये जितने भी फेसबुक का मैं दिखा रहा हूँ लाइव सेशन ये मैं यूट्यूब में अपलोड करूंगा तो मैं आपसे रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा मेरा यूट्यूब चैनल भी आप विजिट कर सकते हैं और वहां कुछ वीडियोस देख सकते हैं धन्यवाद थैंक्स अलॉट वी शिल मीट वंस अगेन टुमारो सेम टाइम विथ सम डिफरेंट गेम गुड बाय